Welcome to a new video. Today I wanted to talk about a topic which I am really interested in since I started uh, to get interested in HEMA um, in the early 2000s and that is the use of the tomahawk. So small hand axe or hatchet. Um, so I'm not the biggest fan of axes and, and, and hatchets in, in combat in general. So I prefer um, back swords and, and cutlass and hangers um, for different reasons. However, from a historical point of view and just to widen the horizon, somehow the tomahawk was always, always interesting to me. Though this weapon, of course, is iconic for the uh, Native American warriors and also for the colonial period and frontier life in general in the 18th and 19th century. So North, Northern America uh, and colonial warfare. Um, but generally speaking, the word tomahawk, which comes from an Algonquian word, which referred to all kinds of uh, war clubs and, and, and stone axes and hand axes in general, so the word was of course adopted to the trade axis the uh, European, especially French and um, English settlers brought with them and um, they made metal axes uh, and hatchets as tools and they were using that, them to trade um, with the Native American tribes of the Eastern Woodlands. Therefore the name Tomahawk was also uh, quickly used for this kind of tool and weapon. So as I said, it is a tool and a weapon, um, so the word Tomahawk also in the period um, is not only referring to a specific form, what we uh, associate with the, with the term tomahawk, but is also associated with all kind of hand axes and hatchets which were used at the time. So a tomahawk in general is just uh, a short hand axe, camp axe, uh, a small tool axe or a small fighting axe in general. Um, so. Um, what we do today, you can also adopt on uh, other small axes, for example, a small Viking hand axe or similar things. So during the French and Indian Wars in the mid 18th century, especially, there were troops equipped with the tomahawk as a sidearm. An example, light infantry regiments and also uh, rangers. So uh, the British, as well as the French and their Indian allies, um, were using hand axes for hand to hand combat. Um, in many occasions, which makes sense if you think about the environment, these, uh, this warfare was done with mainly woodland, so you had uh, very often you know, dark woods, close quarters, ambushes, guerrilla tactics and so on, and therefore a um, hatchet comes in quite handy. Also a lot of militias were not equipped with swords but with hatches because they were much uh, more affordable. But even before the, um, before the uh, Seven Years' War, French and Indian War, as, as the conflict was called in North America, um, there were troops who had hatchets as sidearms and tools, and these were grenadier companies. Uh, in the late 17th and early um, 18th century especially. So they were using this um, as an example for trench warfare, for fortification, attacking fortifications and uh, grenadiers had the, uh, one of their tasks was as shock troops or storm troops being the first in the trenches over the wall and whatnot or when you have um, the field battle you have an example artillery and it's a little bit you know forti fortified um, with machines so they had the, um, the task to use their hatches and you know clear the way for all the other troops, so there were no obstacles in the way. But obviously they would have used these as sidearms as well, if you imagine kind of trench or uh, late 17th century uh, fortification, uh, if you imagine that, then of course this comes quite in handy as a weapon in close quarter combat. To some degree these were also used uh, in naval combat, so uh, sometimes tomahawk and boring axe is a little bit of a mixed up term, uh, or terminology, but um, a real big boarding axe is a different thing to a tomahawk, but still we know that tomahawks and small hatches were also sometimes used in combat on board a ship, and again it makes total sense to have this, if you have this ready, 
as a carpenter or something, um, uh, you know, for woodworking, of course, in close quarters, on board a ship, under the decks, this comes in quite handy also as a fighting weapon. So this is the historical context. Um, do we have historical manuals of how to use them? No, unfortunately we don't. As far as I know, we don't have any. Uh, we have um, a lot of historical references of the tomahawk being used in combat during the 18th and 19th century. Um, there are, I think, two videos by Matt Easton of Scholar Gladiatoria. I will put a link down below in the video description so you can visit his channel and check out his um, historical references of combat with the tomahawk. Uh, so he, he was he's digging out some very, very interesting material and you should check this out. Um, even though we don't have any historical manuals, we have uh, some very good modern manuals. And I don't talk about um, tomahawk as this kind of modern tactical weapon, but with historical context in mind. And uh, mainly, of course, this is the excellent work by uh, Dwight McLamor. He wrote not only a lot of books about staff and Bowie knife fighting, he also um, made two excellent books on the use of the tomahawk in combat. And he's basing this on personal experiences, on training, on experiments, on uh, you know practical applications of his martial background. But he's also was also digging deep into the historical context and the material which could be found, which you can find about the tomahawk being used in combat during history. And um, yeah, his books are, in my opinion, the best ones on the topic if you want to have a how-to manual. He has excellent sketches in it, so I can highly recommend both volumes. If you want to have uh, a written source, a workbook you can, you can work from, you can train from, then this is definitely uh, the, the books you should get. Um, I think there was also back then by Paladin Press a DVD by Dwight McLamor. Um, I don't know if this is still available, uh, available but um, this was also excellent having you know, moving pictures and seeing what he's describing in the books uh, also uh, in an instructional video. Uh, another very good DVD I can recommend you, and this was the one I was working first off from, is by Cold Steel, so the knife company, they make also nice tomahawks, um, and Lynn Thompson, the president, is also a dedicated martial artist and they made a very good DVD uh, which is still avail available in the internet um, about the, also called the fighting tomahawk about tomahawk combat and um, Thompson is using his martial background from different martial arts especially from Filipino martial arts but also from Western fencing and he's combining that and many things he's doing uh, are just the same things I came up with and also set, uh, similar and, and identical things which you can find in uh, McLemore's work. So uh, also highly recommended. If you cannot get the DVD by Dwight McLemore, then you should get the DVD by um, uh, Lynn Thompson by Cold Steel. The Fighting Tomahawk is also very, very good. The Tomahawk I have here is the so-called Bushcraft Tomahawk by, the, um, by Condor. Condor Knife and Tools from El Salvador. A very nice a very good uh, knife uh, maker from El Salvador and they may all make also kind of nice hatchets and uh, axes and uh, I don't know if they make swords yet but uh, they do axes and things like that and machetes and uh, also um, yeah historical inspired knives and, and, and such things and this one is their bushcraft axe or bushcraft tomahawk which is in my opinion a nice thing because I wanted to have um, a woodworking axe which has still the attributes of a tomahawk, so I can use it as both as a tool and as a tomahawk, because um, many tomahawks are sometimes good for fighting, and you can use them for woodworking, but they are not specifically make, made for woodworking, and many woodworking axes are sometimes too top-heavy to be good fighting axes. So this is a very good compromise, I think they made a good job, and what I like is that they combined here kind of a a typical tomahawk but also with a beard a Norse a Norse design you know like Viking axe so it's somewhere in between it's kind of a mix of being a bushcraft axe uh, a tomahawk and a Viking hand axe so I really really like that thing it has a hickory shaft and uh, comes with uh, a nice leather shield with this kind of shoulder strap with also um, a loop or a hole for being carried on the belt so this is kind of very nice, uh, really like that one. Um, it has around a little bit more than 50 centimeters in total length. I think that is a very 
good lengths for a tomahawk, somewhere between 50 and 60 centimeters. They are shorter ones, which can be quite handy, like a camp axe, but personally, I don't like them as a fighting axe. And if they are too long, um, you can have a longer handle on a tomahawk, but personally, I think this kind of 50 to 60 centimeters is very good if you want to carry that as a belt axe or as um, a tool axe, but also having, a, you know, a fighting axe, especially when you're not only carrying a tomahawk, but also uh, another weapon like a sword or, or a hanger or a booby knife or something like that. So, uh, yeah, uh, can only recommend this. I don't get money for saying this, you know, this is um, just a, a hatchet I bought myself. So I like it. I can, I can recommend it. But you can use tomahawks also from different com companies. There are historical uh, replicas by... Um, by Windless, by Hanwai, by many different companies and also you can find modern tomahawks and of course tomahawks by Code Steel are also quite nice. Uh, they are kind of historical inspired and very functional so yeah but this one is mine. The material I'm basing on my my own work with the tomahawk over the last 10 years is mainly by McLabor and Code Steel uh, but of course my own experiments and the base of all this and this is the idea behind this video is um, an introduction in how you can adapt your backsword or broadsword skills on the use of the tomahawk and what difference you have to keep in mind. Well, the tomahawk, of course, is in its balance top heavy. So the broadsword has the balance way back here on the basket hilt, on the handle, and of course the tomahawk is very, very top heavy. Of course, a good tomahawk is not overly heavy, so you can use it with one hand quite well. However, the balance of the weapon goes forward and you have to make use of this. The second, of course, is the tomahawk, as I said, can have a longer handle, but if you want to use it effectively, more than 50 to 60, maybe 70 centimeters are enough. So uh, you, of course, have not the same reach like with a sword. Um, and the third uh, difference, of course, is that you don't have hand protection. This is also an important thing compared to a hanger or a cutlass where we have at least some hand protection, if not even a basket hilt. So these are things you have to keep in mind when you adapt your um, backsword skills on the tomahawk. So um, let's start with the absolute basics. Just quick talking about footwork, the stance, the guards and so on. So, of course, with the tomahawk, you should not stand, stand in like this static uh, broadsword stand with your hand sticking out here. That, of course, is a perfect invitation to be cut into your hand because you don't have hand protection. And also, you have to retract and then swing the weapon uh, to do any kind of attack. So, you have to stand a little bit more like with Highland Dirk. So, you stand a little bit more crouched, a little bit more square with your hips and you have your left hand or check hand ready because with shorter weapon, close quarter combat situation, uh, grappling situations where you have to use your hand for trapping and grappling and everything will of course happen quite more often than with a longer sword. Um, and with a guard, so you don't have a static guard, but you move your hand between an inside and outside and a hanging guard and so you move it in all directions up and down like I would do it with a stick or a cutchel. And also what I like to do is that I retract the weapon here to get it out of the way. So like I would have a dirk and a knife grip. So I take this back and force and move around. And then I use, of course, a lot of the traverse. I can stand left foot forward, right foot forward. And then I move my hand. It's not becoming a target. I use the balance of the head a little bit here to balance it like this. So it's ready to go forward for a strike kind of quickly. When you attack, it's important to note that you don't do like a wide fencing lunge, okay? This is what makes the top heavy uh, hatchet or tomahawk dangerous because you can quickly overpace and then you're open for a counter. So uh, I don't need to make a wide lunge, especially when we consider the context of you know, fighting on board a ship uh, down below the decks or you know in a dark forest uh, where you know behind every tree there could be an opponent, okay? so. Um, I use more like a half lunge or forward step how I would use it with, with a dirt or with a cutlass. Okay, uh, a quick note about how to hold the tomahawk. There are three ways to grip the tomahawk and three ways uh, 
or hand positions along the shaft, uh, how you can hold it. So first of all, you have a hammer grip, so you hold it like a hammer tight here. The second one is more this kind of a handshake grip, where you rest the, sh the shaft here between your palm, the palm of your hand, um, and you have it a little bit more diagonal. And the third one is the thumb grip or saber grip. But this is only used for special occasions. Uh, I will talk about that later because, of course, with a top heavier weapon, there's always a danger that you lose the weapon kind of quickly. Of course, you can attach a strap here with a loop. So if you lose it, you have it still here. But this is dangerous. You can get this easy smacked out of your hand because it's so top heavy. So this is only some grip for special occasions. The other thing is the position of the hand on the shaft. So we have the long grip, which is kind of here, not, not, not too far down here because this is too top heavy. It was a little bit stucking out. So you use the complete reach of your weapon. This, you could call this the long grip. Um, the second one is half choke. Sometimes I call it the Irish guard, like with Irish stick fighting or a middle grip. So now you have it on half choke, so around the middle of your uh, tomahawk and now it's, it's a little bit more balanced and this is of course more versatile now and you have more flexibility in your wrist and you can do quicker changes and this is of course very good for closer quarters okay when you're really close with your opponent and the third position of the hand on the shaft is the full choke so uh, holding it here directly under the axe head which means this is of course good for wood, uh, finer wood processing, for finer works, finer tasks. But this is also the position if you have your uh, tomahawk in the belt on your right side and you pull it out like this, you have it this half choke and ready. And this is not too bad because you can do kind of punches, rakes, cuts, punching forward, using, using this like a really bad knuckle duster and punching forward, but also for hooking and cutting and slashing, you can use your shaft to punch and to, to thrust um, and also to grapple. So you could do kind of these fancy things here or you could here hook something because you have it now like you would have a dirk and therefore it's also good um, if you have it as an offhand tool or you have to pull it out of your belt an attack comes here and you cover your head with the shaft on your alongside your forearm like you would do with a dirk. So this is also quite nice and that, that is something that makes the tomahawk really interesting for me because these uh, hand positions alongside the chef make it an interesting weapon um, to train here to go alongside the chef in the different positions to have different advantages um, in different situations. That makes it interesting as a weapon for me.